Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got a brand new set of bone conduction headphones for you, namely the Kaibo Flex. This one was designed to be used for exercise and it also has a few interesting features, so let's get right into the details. In case you haven't heard about the Kaibo Flex before, that's probably because the company has just started their crowdfunding campaign on Kickstarter recently, with an estimated delivery of the first batch sometime in April 2022. I've been using and testing the Flex for a couple of weeks now, as I got a pre-production model from the manufacturer. And here I have to mention that I'm not getting paid for this video, so all you are going to get is my honest opinion on the headphones, based on my own personal experience. But what are these guys exactly? Well, if you have seen bone conduction headphones before, you will know immediately what you are dealing with when looking at the Kaibo Flex. Headphones with bone conduction technology create sound through resonating the bones in front of your ears without having to plug anything into your ear canals. And this open ear design is one of the main advantages of using headphones such as the Kaibo Flex. Of course there are other advantages too, but we are focusing on the open ear design as from a sport headphones perspective, situational awareness and road safety can be a key selling point. And the Kaibo Flex delivers on that front. There is not Nothing blocking your ears, so you can hear your surroundings easily during running or cycling. The titanium alloy frame is lightweight and flexible, but it's also strong enough to keep the headphones in place even during intense workouts. The long-term comfort is okay, but it's not perfect in my case, as the speakers press a little against my tragus, which is this little piece of cartilage at the front of the external ear. This is the case with most bone conduction headphones to some degree though, so it's nothing to be worried about, and people with smaller heads should be perfectly happy with the comfort of the headphones. The Kaibo Flex can be used on a bike as well, but to be honest with you, I didn't feel like getting out there that much recently, but in case you were wondering, the headphones can easily be used with a helmet and with sunglasses too even if it makes you look a bit foolish on an indoor bike. The general design of the Flex is very similar to its competitors. In terms of its dimensions and weight, it's right in between the Shox Open Run and the Nyanka Runner Pro for example. The IP55 rating is just about average amongst sport specific headphones, but it makes the Flex protected against dust, sweat and splashes nonetheless. And that protection against the elements should be good enough for most outdoor activities and sweat inducing workouts. And talking about protection, that little soft carrying pouch I got with the headphones is nowhere near as good as those silicone or hard cases that you can get with some other headphones on the market. It would be nice to see at least a silicone pouch similar to the one that comes with the Shox Open Run in the box of the Kaibo Flex 2. I don't think that's going to happen though, so let's just move on to something the Kaibo Flex comes with, but you cannot find in the box of its competitors. And that's the portable wireless magnetic charging dock. While the headphones themselves can last up to 8 hours on a single charge, there is a battery in the charging dock with enough juice to fully charge the headphones another 4 times, bringing the total playtime up to around 40 hours. The charging dock is compact and lightweight enough to be carried around in a bag, so we never have to worry about the batteries of our headphones. Snapping the Kaibo Flex on the dock for a 5 minute quick charge can give you an hour of battery life, or if you are in less of a hurry, 45 minutes of charging can give the headphones enough power for 6 hours of use, which is more than a week worth of training for most people. The dock itself can be charged on any Qi compatible wireless charging pad and also using the USB Type-C port on its top. And in my opinion, this whole battery life slash wireless charging dock slash quick charge trifecta is quite remarkable and unique amongst bone conduction headphones. Onto the wireless connection, the Kaibo Flex comes with Bluetooth version 5.2 on board and it supports the SBC and AAC audio codecs. The connection is solid, the range is good and I never had any signal related issues during my tests, not even in a busy gym. Multipoint pairing is going to be supported at some stage, but I couldn't make it work yet. My contact at Kaibo told me that they are working on it, so hopefully the feature will be ready soon. There are no lip sync issues with movies on Netflix or videos on YouTube, but games are a different story as there is a noticeable lag which might render the headphones useless for hardcore gamers. And here is a quick audio sample for you from the onboard microphones of the Kaibo Flex. 
my voice sounds a bit boxy and the audio signal comes in a bit too hot causing some clipping and distortion but my voice is easy to understand regardless putting the environmental noise cancellation at work by turning on some background chatter makes no difference as my voice retains its clarity and the background noise is kept pretty well under control the controls are one of the highlights of these headphones. We get a touch sensitive panel on each speaker unit, which have snappy reaction times and they register touches quite accurately. They work well under most conditions, even with sweaty fingers or when you are on the move. We cannot really complain about their functionality either, since we get play, pause, track, volume, voice assistant and phone call controls shared between the two sides. There is no smartphone app, so there is no remapping for the touch controls, but what we get is an infrared sensor on the head units for smart playback. It means that the flex will detect if you remove them from your head and it will pause playback immediately and it will resume as soon as you put the headphones back on. No other bone conduction headphones I've ever tested have autoplay pause, but it's something the Kaibo Flex can offer. Next up is the sound quality. Now to be fair, sound quality itself is never the reason why you wanna buy bone conduction headphones. With that said, I believe these buds can deliver a decent sound and they can make listening to music enjoyable during exercise. Bass is not the strongest even by bone conduction standards, so do not expect to get a deep low end. Well, you cannot expect any low end if I want to be completely honest here. But that's something we've come to accept from open-ear headphones, so no real surprise there. Where Kaibo can really flex its muscles, pun intended, is the mid-range and the treble. We get enough details across the higher frequencies and most instruments and especially vocals come through with great clarity. And that makes them perfect for listening to podcasts or watching YouTube videos. The stereo image is good even if a bit compressed. Separation and sound stage is as good as it gets on open-air headphones. Compared to the Shox Open Run, formerly known as Aftershox Aeropex, which is generally considered to be one of the best in the category to date, we get definitely less bass, less dynamics and less overall volume with the flex. So everything sounds a bit more flat, but in exchange we get less of those tickling and annoying vibrations. The other area where the Kaibo Flex can easily keep up with the Shox, or in certain cases it can deliver even better results, is the clarity in the mid-range and the treble. Not sure which one I prefer as some songs sound too boxy on the Aeropex, while others sound way too flat on the Flex. The Nyanka Runner Pro is closer to the Kaibo Flex in terms of its bass response, but the Nyanka can go much louder even though it can only do that at the expense of more vibration. The Kaibo Flex wins in terms of clarity and vocal quality. In terms of sound leakage, the Shox headphones perform a touch better, regardless of volume, with the Nyanka and the Kaibo delivering very similar results. In conclusion, the Kaibo Flex delivers a good, balanced performance across the board. We get a good enough sound with minimal vibrations and a decent build quality. What makes them stand out from the crowd is the fully capable touch controls and the wireless charging dock, which can give the headphones an extremely long battery life compared to the competition. The retail price is $120, which all things considered makes the Kaibo Flex competitive on the bone conduction market, in my opinion. And this was my review of the Kaibo Flex Bone Conduction Headphones. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, you can of course leave a comment down below. Thank you for watching. See you next time.